It was normal day in cyberspace. No sign of hacker meant no trouble. Matt was relaxing, seeing as he had nothing to do. The sound of the mailman rung through Matt's ears, as he got up to check what he got in the mail. Not a lot was in the mail, except for a note. Matt read the note, and found out it was from Digit, telling him to come make cyber cakes with him. He always wanted to try Digit's cyber cakes, so he decided to go for the heck of it. When Matt walked into Digit's house, he was immediately greeted by his host who was hopping with glee. I'm so glad you could make it, said the seabird. Sorry if I'm late, Digit. I was relaxing and lost track of time Matt apologized. Digit giggled and responded in a gleefully reassuring tone. Oh that's okay, you're here now. Wah to s a few more minutes? I've been so excited thinking about all fun stuff we're gonna do. I haven't stopped hopping since I woke up. I mean, I almost forgot to breathe I've been so happy. Matt gave a slightly uncomfortable laugh. He had always appreciated Digit's friendly, outgoing way of life, but Digit's overabundant enthusiasm almost creeped him out. Matt maintained a polite expression, however. So, you ready to get started, Matt? I've got everything all ready, the purple bird said. Matt psyched himself up. I am so excited to make cyber cakes, I hear everybody in cyberspace loves them, and I hope to try them, yep, and I made one, just for you said the seabird, as he handed Matt a cyber cake, so, is this like taste testing or something, sorta, Digit said, Matt shrugged and popped the pastry in his mouth, he chewed a bit and swallowed, not bad, okay, now what, Matt asked, now, Digit informed him, you take a nap, puzzled. Matt opened his mouth but felt instantly lightheaded. A wave of dizziness washed over him. The world spun, and seconds later he collapsed to the floor. When Matt regained consciousness, he found himself in a dark room. He tried to shake his head but found that a taut leather strap held it firmly in place. He struggled to move, but braces around his chest and limbs glued him to a rack formed from a series of sturdy planks, which spread his legs wide apart. As he writhed, Digit jumped suddenly into his line of sight. Goody, you're awake. Now we can get started, said the seabird, as he jumped back into the darkness. The seabird came back with a table, which was hidden by cloth. Digit uncovered the cloth revealing sharp surgical tools. I am ready to start, joked the seabird, grabbing a scalpel. Wait, what are you? But before Matt could continue, Digit stuck the scalpel into Matt's eye the veins in his eye in pain, as he screamed and started to sob. The seabird tugged the scalpel, almost pulling the eye out. The scalpel was now covered in blood. Matt remembered the red filling inside the cyber cakes Digit baked, then realized it was blood inside them. Digit stabbed the eye again, this time pulling the eye out. The seabird placed the eyeball onto the table of knives, taking out a chainsaw. Ever heard of the movie named Saw, Matt? Asked Digit. The Sibbard proceeded to strike Matt in the stomach with the chainsaw. With Matt screaming in agony, blood gushed out, onto the chainsaw. As Digit pulled it out, he opened up Matt's body. There were multiple organs and intestines. The Sibbard picked organ after organ, until there was nothing left but a heart. I heard you, Matt. Joked Digit, pulling the heart out, ending Matt's life. Now, I can have Matt all to myself. I can do whatever I want to him. He began to search for stuffing the cyber cakes could wait, Digit had a friend to make, 